So pairing up a 3700X or a 3900X with an NVIDIA Quadro P2000 is, it's a beautiful relationship. The P2000 can handle quite a bit. Having a 3700X or a 3900X to back it up is a solid choice. If you haven't seen my video, I'll link it up above. The P2000, it's great. Backing it up with a powerful CPU, something like a new gen Ryzen 3000 series CPU, really allows your Plex server to pack a major punch. We're talking about transcoding here, kids, and that means if you have a P2000 with a Ryzen 3900X, then your server can do much, much more than just serve Plex media files, which is all well and good and everything, but I had a few people ask an actually somewhat important question. How much power would that take? And if you think about it, you got the seven nanometer process going on over here with the P2000 that doesn't even take enough power to require its own power line. Like something like a 2080 Ti, for example, requires two power lines. Yeah, I know, that's a flagship, top of the line, power hungry GPU comparing it to this little tiny thing. But it still raises a great question. If I were to run this 24 seven, how much power would it actually take at full speed? And then I realized I have the tools to test this. And all you have to do is just, just ignore this mess. All of this, this does not exist. You did not see this. Okay, you saw that, but not that. I actually bought this little tool online just because I wanted to see what kind of power consumption I have. And I plugged it in to my server. And you can kind of see right there, this is hooked up to my UPS and that's hooked up to Quite a bit of stuff but primarily it's hooked up to my zeus main server but as you can see 118 watts right now i'm not entirely sure what all is plugged into but i know it's primarily plugged into my zeus main server so one of the great things though about having a backup power supply is when you want to do stuff like this it doesn't hurt a thing it's actually it doesn't matter Right now, I have the 3700X installed on the system. Uh, this is running the X570 Godlight Meg MSI motherboard. Completely overkill motherboard, but I got one that could just do all the things for all the reasons. And also because it was shiny. I liked it. So, to do this, so I can keep an eye on the actual power, I'm going to run this little power extension cord here. I'm just going to shut it right. Yeah, right about there, looks good. There we go. And then I'm just going to plug this in on the desktop so I can look at the power right here. That moment when you realize that it was set on volts, but you already recorded yourself reading the wattages. You know what? For the purpose of this video, I will go back at the end and I'll plug it back into Zeus and Zeus's backup power and all that, and I'll see what the rating is. Just because that was a dumb thing for me to look at. Okay, so the basic draw here, we got 3.4 watts at just being in standby. Uh, so I'm gonna prop this right there and you can see that. And let's see what it actually draws, just booting up. Again, this is the 3700X. It's running at stock speeds on the X570 Godlike MSI motherboard with the Quadro installed. Everything here is stock except for my RAM, which is 3200. It comes like 2133 or whatever. So I'm running the, the normal overclocking to 3200 as it is. Really what I want to do is stress the CPU and the GPU at the same time and see what my max peak wattage usage is. So, okay, so the graphics would not run. It's giving me a texture error. So, okay, so I finally got everything to run at once, even though when I'm running a CPU test and a GPU test, it's a little weird, but the peak I've seen is about 215. I've seen it actually hover at 215 for a while, but it seems to go between 200 and 215. And that's with uh, the memory being tested, the CPU being tested, and the graphics card being tested as well. All, usually about 90 or 100% over here. So. 215 watts for a 3700X, 32 gigs of RAM, a 970 Pro SSD. This includes no hard drives, so keep that in mind, with an EVGA 1000 watt power supply. 
So shutting everything down and basically letting this thing sit idle but still running, it seems to be bouncing between the 65 to about 80 watt usage. You know, I'm not running any tests, not doing anything, just letting it sit. So 66 right now. And now the fun part of doing these tests is having to take it and swap out the CPU. But one thing that I learned when you're using, even though you have a, a very large quantity of thermal paste, thermal grizzly thermal paste, actually, this is good stuff. When you have a large amount, you still don't want to waste it. So, you know, you want to do things like reuse your old thermal, thermal paste, thermal, why, why can I not say thermal paste tonight? You don't want to waste the thermal paste. You reuse what you can, reuse, recycle, it's a good thing. Oh man, I just got thermal paste all over. Had a little bit too much. Look at that. I'm putting this on the internet for everybody to judge. Look at that. Oh, that's so messy. What am I gonna do with this? Oh, that's disgusting. How dare you, Jason? I could edit that out, but I won't. And here is the 3900X. Just slide that right in there and lock that right there in place, like so. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I am saving the planet. And we just replace it back with this. Hook it on this side right here, there we go. Lay it right in there. There we go. And then tighten it up. Just like that. Okay, so we're sitting about idle. It's, it seems to jump between that whole 65, 64 ish. Sometimes it gets up to 70 and 90 just for random stuff, but. It does seem to kind of idle at the same amount, and I'm still, and I'm still running just zero percent right here. So now that we're idling about the same, I'm gonna start some benchmarks and some tests. This is with the CPU stress test, it doesn't seem to want to ramp up past eighty percent. I'm gonna run a Cinebench on top of this, then we're gonna see what this thing will do. Now before this, with the 3900X, I got a 3122 in Cinebench R15. Uh, so this is obviously going to be a lot lower just because I'm doing everything else at the same time. 279. So if we run a quick energy consumption calculator online and we're putting the 3700 at 215 watts, that's being used 24 hours a day. Locally, I looked it up. My uh, my cents per kilowatt hour is eight cents on the high range. It's usually like in between seven and eight. So the cost to run the Ryzen 3700 full blown all day long, every day for a month would cost me $12.38 or $150 a year. And then if we run that same calculation, where I was 279 is what I said? Yeah, 279. That's gonna take me up to $16 or $195 a year. But let's say it's running at 70 watts, which is roughly about its idle, and it's doing that 24 hours a day, and you don't actually use it that much, and it's still eight cents. That means just to stay powered on, it's costing me $4 a month, or $50 a year to continually run this without it actually doing anything. So the end result's a little bit interesting. 215 watts peak power on the 3700, that's with 32 gigs of RAM, and a P2000 ran by a 1000 watt EVGA, and one SSD, that's an M.2 low power. You're gonna increase your cost with additional hard drives, of course, but just for the base numbers here, that's pretty decent, 215 watts, peak power. Keep in mind that your idle power is 60 to 70 watts, which is, again, really good, especially because those same idle numbers carry over to the 3900X. Although the 3900 does top out at like 275, 279 watts which is a big difference. I mean, you're looking at $150 a year if it's maxed out all year to $195 a year just to run this server.
So let's think about the baseline there, being about $50 a year to run this, or four to $5 a month if it's sitting idle most of the time. So what I recommend, if you are interested in something like this, to look up the local energy cost in your area, because I'm in Kansas, I don't even know if mine is really high compared to others. Mine's eight cents, yours could be more. The one in there said 12 cents as the default, so I had to change that. I know other places are gonna be higher and lower than mine, so definitely check with the calculator yourself to see what the cost would be for you. Well guys, that's it for today. Just a random video addressing a few questions that I had about the power consumption of the Ryzen 3700 and the Ryzen 3900X CPU paired with a P2000. And I have to say, I did not know what to expect. I actually thought it would be a lot higher. I thought it'd be like over 300, 350 probably. So honestly, I'm a little surprised, but then, you know, seven nanometer, I guess not too surprising. But if you guys have any questions or comments or complaints about my horrible, horrible job with this, the thermal paste, definitely let me know about it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great night or day. It's always a day. Actually, I promised that I would hook this thing back up and see what this was because for whatever reason, I was reading volts as watts and I'm completely dumb. So hook it up and let's see what it is. And now we have a true reading. Let's see what this is. 553 watts. 564 watts it probably hovers between that 560 to 600 pretty common like it's only doing one stream right now so let's say it's 570 watts being used 24 hours a day and my cost is eight cents per that puts me at a total cost of 32 dollars a month to run zeus or 399 dollars a year give or take some change Damn. Just like that, a CPU is swapped. Forgot to put the P2000 in.